Keep it lonely, Lassi I Reef. He's stocky, beefy winger from Nardi Fiji, who is an absolute pocket rocket when it comes to the rugby field. He's a young, 22-year-old, 87kg bottle of fizz and pop who burst onto the scene for the Crusaders in 2019 playing under the breakdancing legend Scott Robertson. He's a physical, zippy player who made his name at Hamilton Boys High School and quickly came up the ranks playing with Waikato in the Mitre 10 Cup and then earning an opportunity to play for the aspiring three-peating Crusaders. Sebu first joined Waikato in 2016 and although he wasn't a clear standout, he did score seven tries in his rookie season and fine-tuned his skills until he was eventually called into the Crusaders preseason squad for 2019. Playing with essentially the All Blacks B team, Sebu quickly caught the eye as the next X-Factor Fijian product who people very early on were advocating for him to be the All Blacks winner for the 2019 Rugby World Cup. And why wouldn't you? It's hard sometimes to fully appreciate just how good a player truly is when they're with the Crusaders. When you're playing with that much talent and a rigorous system like that, it can be hard to shine through. David Harvey and Brayden Enum, for example, probably suffer because of it. The question remains, if they were doing what they had been doing all year on a poor team like the Blues, would they be in the 31-man squad to Japan? Probably. Even young gun Will Jordan is looking like a megastar playing for Tasman, and he barely could even make it onto the field. Zebu didn't suffer from this effect at all. He was a clear standout throughout all of the Crusaders' campaign, making every Super Rugby Team of the Year list. From his debut, he was turning heads as he scored an intercept try, set up another meat pie, and committed an absolute felony by knocking Ally Marlo right out. I mean, seriously, look at this hit. This is a kid, first game, not even really lining up his opposite and hitting the living daylight out of him. Alright, I digress. My point is, he had a man of the match performance and never looked back when he crushed his rookie of the year, winning the title was throwing a try in the final and bursting onto the scene of international rugby with three caps for the All Blacks that were all mightily impressive in their own way. Reese truly has a magical razzle-dazzle aspect to his game. Kind of reminds me of Bowden Barrett where he will usually not always get the magic balance or make something freakish happen when you're just sitting back and asking what's real and what's not. He's slippery, but he's also rigid, making him very hard to pull down. I feel Sebu has a very natural feel for this. Sometimes Fijian flyers can just be used as battering rams, but Reese looks different. Although he does play with some fantastic playmakers such as Crotty and Mawanga, Reese usually is where he needs to be on attack. He can pass through holes with his pace and his ability to run beautiful support lines. He has a tendency to be a real workhorse around the field, popping up where he's needed on both defense and attack. This includes understanding other teams' patterns, as he can be a nifty thief being a real interceptor. Like I swear there's been times this year where he's just popped into the opposite team's back line and he's just run away for a try and you're just like, why would you throw that pass? He was right there the entire time. Don't get me wrong though, there are worries. Reese made only 67% of his tackles this year for the Crusaders. For someone with such devastating tackling ability and such great defenders on his inside, that is a little low for my liking. Sometimes Sebu can look a little lost on defense. There's some work-ons for his attacking game too. Sometimes Sebu can get a little too cute with it. Trying to pull off the spectacular, once in a lifetime, highlight on Sports Center play when you'd prefer for him to just put his head down and unleash that pit bull like speed and energy. Sometimes he pulls it off. That's what makes him great to watch. I know. But at times, I don't need him to make a break. I need him to get over the advantage line and set up the next play. This will all come with experience. We need to remember Sebu made his debut against high standard competition a quarter of the way through this year's Super Rugby season. Is that enough experience to chuck him into a team looking to snatch their third World Cup in a row? That's a lot of pressure. Comparisons for Sebu are a little difficult. His game is quite similar to Rokothoko, lots of physicality, that Fiji and Seven's brilliance garnish to their games. I think Rokothoko though has him on speed and Rokothoko had an excellent step that he could fall back on. I think Sebu can be more dangerous with his changes of pace and jitteriness that can leave defenders grasping at him, not able to get a clean shot. Sebu Vatu may be in aspects. When I see Reese, I'm mostly reminded of Waisaki Naholo's 2015 campaign. The defenders clutching at their ankles only to be flicked away like mosquitoes, the mix of speed and finesse, as well as pure rhinoceros-like power which combines to create an unstoppable force. That Highlanders team had a brilliant, informed first five who 
would look like the next predecessor to the All Blacks 10 jersey in Lima Sopawanga, who when combined with his winger, masterminded a deadly attack. There are a lot of parallels between that combination and what Mwanga and Reese seem to have this year. Sweet, sweet chemistry. This, this is art, Mr. White. Actually, it's just basic chemistry, but thank you, Jesse. I'm glad it's acceptable. I've been hearing a lot of chatter comparing Severis's situation now to Nehi Milner's scudders in 2015. How he is this new savior, a dark knight, to come along and save the day for the All Blacks. I'm not buying it. Not completely. Don't get me wrong. We've all seen what he's capable of. This comparison, though, it's comparing apples to oranges. The All Blacks 2015 World Cup squad was a sweet symphony. All around the park, positions were set in stone as Hansen conducted an experienced squad filled with established stars and all-time legends. All-time, all-time legends. God, man, I, I miss the days. From the tough board pack led by His Holiness McCaw and a backline with a Daniel Carter focused on cementing his legacy as the greatest first five to ever walk the earth. The hot stepper Milner Scudder was... A, a cherry on top. Was he brilliant? Absolutely. Did he sneak into the All Black starting squad with a great performance at Eden Park like Sever Reese? Mm hmm. But Milner Scudder was operating and added to a team where everything had been established and orchestrated to a T. If 2015 was a Hans Zimmer classical orchestra performance, this All Black side is more a new wave, lucid hip hop group. It's a bubbling cauldron of cacophony that is somehow mixed by Hansen to have some absolute bangers. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but hear me out. This All Black team has questions. A lot of them. And not that many answers. Sometimes the odd combinations and changes and selections came together to form a mystical performance, like what we saw at Hamilton and Eden Park this year. Other times it can be a dog's breakfast that results in fans in rage, press releases and sweating foreheads. Granted, Reese didn't play against Australia in Perth, nor against South Africa in Wellington, but I'm unsure if he is the key that will fix everything to a side that already seems to be struggling with structure. Would I have him play instead of Rico Yuani? Would I want him out there over Ben Smith? It doesn't really matter what I think. I mean, Hanson I would trust with my own life, and he's exponentially more qualified than I am. But I think it is worth second guessing and looking over it instead of crowning him instantly. If it was up to me, I'd give him an audition. Play him against South Africa in the most important pool game and see what happens. Roll the dice. If it works, we could have another rescuer on our hands that will be looked at fondly in history as the guy who won New Zealand the World Cup. Joining the ranks with the legendary Perry Wepu and the aforementioned Milner Scudder. If it doesn't, and he misses the most important tackle of the game for example, we run the risk of doubling the difficulty of the road to the final. Is that a risk Hansen's willing to take? Only time will tell. But I'm certainly intrigued what the future holds for Seven. We see once in a lifetime wingers come around all the time. Wingers burst onto the scene and disappear with the ever evolving game of rugby. Reese, just by the eye test, looks different. He's got that swagger and demeanor that looks like he has that overwhelming confidence in his ability. I like him. His future will, in my opinion, truly depend on his growth of his defensive game and if, pure and simply, he can continue his wizardry and have that magical touch. If he does, the All Blacks may have found a diamond in the rough once again. If he doesn't, he has the potential to fizzle out into the background and become just another flash in the pan. I'm curious to see how it plays out. Let me know your thoughts.